What is up all of my horror fanatics out there? Welcome back. I'm the Jay Sloan and I'm joined by my beautiful girlfriend. Hope. And we are back here to do another Horror Madness video. Now it's been a long time since I've did a Horror Madness and I think, uh, I think it's due. Um, I really miss doing these videos and if you like this video we'll continue on with season two of this show. And by the title you already know we're going to be doing a Horror Madness on the complete first season of Tales from the Crypt, uh, which was created in 1989, and this is one that I grew up with, and I know she did as well. It's been very, very long since we've watched it, so I'm excited to dive into it. Some very iconic episodes, and to be honest, most of the uh, the seasons are enjoyable at best. Uh, I think one thing that gets overlooked with this show, and I'll talk about it uh, during and at the end of the video, is um, the cast, the directing, um, how it's produced. I just think it's a very well-rounded uh, show. And not only that, but there's some episodes that are genuinely fucking creepy. So, yeah, are you excited? I'm really excited. I'm excited to get into <laughs> it and watch it. We've got ourselves some drinks. What are you drinking, babe? A strawberry lemonade, truly. And I'm drinking just classic Bud Light. And we're going to catch a buzz and watch a show. In between, you're going to see certain clips uh, of the snacks and the food that we've conjured up. And so on and so forth. Uh, but, yeah. Without further ado, six episodes. We're gonna dive into it. We're just gonna we're gonna just go balls deep <laughs> into this show, and I'm ready. So we're gonna go ahead and press play, and we'll see you guys back here in a little bit with some clips. So in 89, we were introduced to the Crypt Keeper himself in the very first episode of Tales from the Crypt, The Man Who Was Death, which is one of my personal favorites. Bill Sadler's great in it. It's got a really great story. We're going to cover the entire season and kind of break apart the episodes towards the end, which ones we liked, which ones we liked the most and the least, but, but you look excited. I'm excited. It's new for me all over again. I know. So, and you're also beautiful, so <laughs> just want to leave that there. Uh, feel free to comment about that if you want. No, uh, so let's not. But, uh, yeah, so there's going to be a few clips. This is the opening of this one. Thought it'd be cool to share the, the opening of Tales from the Crypt. Uh, we're a minute and a half here now. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll catch back up with you guys here in a little bit and see what episode we're on and, and all that stuff, so... See ya. Here we have all of our snacks. Well, most of our snacks for the night anyway. Got a couple pizzas here. Um, stuffed crust and then a regular cheese pizza for the kids. Uh, waters, of course, which we won't be uh, drinking those uh, tonight. Tales from the Crypt, the first season, which arguably the best season. Two and three are really good as well, but I really I have a lot of nostalgia for that season. Popcorn chicken, and the deal with this is these are basically like wings, so we're just going to use the B-Dub sauce. For the chicken, little Ken's Ranch and Pringles, we are totally set for the night, like 100% set. It's one thing that's always stuck out to me about this episode is Bill Sadler just really just owns this role, calm, cool, and collected role, and in 25 to 30 minute runtime, it's really, really crazy. A lot of breaking the fourth wall here, and he's talking to us as an audience, and calm, cool, and collected country boy who likes to electrocute people. What do you think about this character and how he played him? I think he played him really well. I think that he, his character himself just accepts death and just like welcomes it. Like it's, he doesn't fear it. And that's kind of creepy in its own way. And I think he's just a legal killer. <laughs> I agree. I agree. This might be the last clip of this episode, but it, it it's one of my favorites. So, the man who was death, 
It's a good thing it's a start because it's a perfect way to start the series if you haven't seen it. But uh, yeah, we're going to end it here and we'll probably see you guys back here uh, with the second episode, which is also a fucking badass episode. So, so ooh, the wings are about to go in. Man, I'm looking forward to eating these. Looking forward to watching the first season. Oh man, it's going to be a blast. You guys want to see a cute dog? Callie. The most sweet and gentle dog ever. I'll introduce you to Callie. Great dog, great snacks, and uh, great drinks, and a great uh, great season to watch. I'm looking forward to doing this movie madness, guys. It's been a while since we did one, so I think we're, uh, we're about due. So, see you guys back here in a little bit. I don't know what clip's going to come next. Maybe a clip of the, uh, the show itself. Maybe a clip of the food. Maybe just a random-ass clip. But either way, uh, stick with us. It's going to be a fun journey. So, and all through the house is another one of my personal favorites. It sucks. I, I usually watch this once in December. Um, everybody else is watching It's a Wonderful Life, and I'm watching Black Christmas, Silent Night, Deadly Night, and, and all through the house. Larry Drake's fucking great in this episode. I know that my my gorgeous goddess over here has not seen this one in a long time, so I'm I'm excited to see her uh, her first impression on the episode. But uh. Hey, babe. Hi. Are you expecting this one to be good? Yes, of course. You think it's going to be better than the first episode? I don't know. It's a good episode. It's Christmas. Christmas. I know you love Christmas, so... Um, but yeah, we're almost... Uh, after this, we'll be two episodes deep, and there's only six, so it's not very long. But are you having fun so far? I'm having so much fun with Being you. Always. Always with you. Oh, okay. I love you. I love you more. Not possible. <laughs> so we're going to... We are, uh, we're a couple drinks in now, loosening up a little bit, and we're gonna, we're gonna watch this episode. We'll, there'll be another clip, of course. Um, I'm gonna try to do one clip per episode, and we'll do it that way. I don't want the video to be too long, because I don't want to bore you guys, but I think this is pretty good entertainment. And we're fun. We're very fun. Yes, very fun. So, <laughs> for Santa. <laughs> so, we'll end it here, guys. Alright, so the wings are officially done. Don't let anybody ever tell you that Jay Sloan doesn't know how to cook because I did a lot of heavy lifting here and uh, yeah, there are tons of us. See. Now you can leave them in there longer, obviously, if you want them to be a little crispier, but we want them to be tender. So, what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to apply the sauce and then we're going to enjoy. And yeah, it's gonna be a blast. You're probably gonna be seeing this uh, during uh, in and out during the video through some clips that we didn't get a film from the show itself. So here's the wings. Yeah. 
do you? Dig that cat. He's real gone. This is one, um, this is the first, like, out of the box kind of, uh, episode that's not really plausible. That's why I like it. You have the first two that, that could happen and probably has happened, honestly. This one is, uh, where they kind of went a little kooky with it. Uh, they didn't go overboard like they do in like later seasons, but I love this one. This is one of the most memorable ones to me. This entire season, it's the best season of the show, in my opinion, um, which that usually kind of stands with, uh, with the original of anything. The original film doesn't really matter. Um, first, I want to show Cali Girl, most beautiful dog in the world. What are you doing, Cali? Sit. She's trying to give the camera a kiss. Oh, and she's giving me a handshake here. So you do remember this one, baby. I do. Uh, you like this one? I do. I do as well. So we're, <laughs> we're three episodes deep, about three drinks deep, and uh, feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good about the, uh, the Board of Madness overall. So this is one clip. We'll probably have another one of, uh, of this episode, considering we, we both really like it. We both have fond like memories of it. I know I do uh, specifically. I remember watching this uh, episode with my sister a lot, and really just enjoying it. And I enjoy the actor in it as well. I can't remember his name right now, but he uh, he was in uh, Bad Boys among other things. But we're gonna go ahead and cut it here, and we'll see you guys back in a little bit with the clip. too close for comfort. I mean, if this guy involves me, I don't know if I can come back. And even if I can, eh. So, the next time, I made special arrangements. Crowley was gonna get my body no matter what. And so we have Ulrich, who has been granted nine lives like a cat. And it's it's another <clears throat> really off the wall and un uh, unorthodox story. Well, the first of many. And, um, it's really goofy. I've noticed as they went along, the first one, it had its goofy moments, but it was super serious, and the more that they go along, they do tend to get goofy. There's some pretty, um, pretty creepy moments in each, uh, each little segment, though, but hello to you, my dear. Hi, baby. So, you've seen this one. Does this bring back memories? It does. <laughs> It does. Do you, do you, uh, I know we're going to do our ranking at the end. Uh, mm -hmm. Does this rank high or low so far? Like, now or then. It depends. Like, if I was ranking it now, it wouldn't be high for me. But because it brings back memories, I think I would rank it a little bit higher just because of okay. nostalgia. Okay, so we have made it to the fourth episode, Only Sin Deep. Um, this one's enjoyable. Leah Thompson does a really good job. It's a little bit slower paced, um, but I, I still like it nonetheless. I don't want to say it's my least favorite out of the season, because I'm, I'm sure it isn't. There might be another one. Uh, the next one uh, on the list might be my least favorite, if it's the one I'm thinking of. Don't tell but me, don't tell me. I'm sorry, but I could be incorrect. Um, this one, like I said, slower, deals with a little bit of like... Uh, obsessiveness over beauty and, and complexion and, and what happens when you take those things too seriously. Um, speaking of beauty, got my gorgeous girlfriend Hope here. What do you, have, do you remember this episode at all? A little. I think I do. A little bit, but not like its entirety. Okay, what are you, what are, are you expecting this to be? To be good? Uh, a lot of this episode is Full female cast. There's there's a little bit of male. What else is she playing? In. Um, she was in Back to the Future. Um, that's what I remember from. I think. Yeah, and I set the camera there for a second. That's okay. 
Uh, she was in Back to the Future. She was in some kind of wonderful. She's been in tons yes. of projects, movies, and she's a really good actress. But um, yeah, she does good in this one as well. This also, I mean, she was high profile at the time, and there was a lot of actors within this first season that was. So, so to see they're in this show, it had a lot of value to it. That's why I don't know. I don't know why the show doesn't get more praise than what it does. Because to me, it's it's the best horror show of all time. Um, could be. It's it's got some cheesy moments for sure. Uh, yeah, I know you do, and I do too. So. We are on episode four. We're going to go ahead and cut here. We'll probably do another clip here momentarily and uh, show a little bit more of Only Sin Deep. So stick with us, guys. We're going to barrel through this. We're, I don't know how many drinks in. We've not been keeping tally. We should have, but we are, uh, we're buzzed and we're ready to keep watching this. So stick with us. Okay, so we are at the saucing stage. So the first thing you're going to want to do is take a drink of beer first. This is just a tradition. You have to do this. Okay, now that's out of the way, we're going to move on to the sauces. So the first sauce we're going to be coating the wings with is the Buffalo Wild Wings Honey Barbecue Sauce, which uh, was named by my lovely girlfriend, Hope. What did you name these wings that you're going to be eating? Blood of the Boogeyman Barbecue Wings. Okay, great. Now, <laughs> my, the wings that I'm going to be uh, doing is the hot sauce. It's the buffalo with major heat. And I named mine the Hellfire Brimstone Buffalo Wings. So, yeah, I'm ready to do this. What I'm going to do is just... And I'm going like full blown with this because I want it to be hot as hell. I want the Crypt Keeper to lick his mouth and just be completely jealous that he did not get to indulge in these wings. I think I put extremely too much. I used half the bottle on this. But it's going to coat nicely. And there we go. I also used half the bottle on yours. So yeah. What if we mixed them? I don't know. It might be a disaster, but it could be amazing. So, I'm going to simply do this and get her to... Uh, so we're going to do the Blood of the Boogeyman barbecue wings. We're just going to give these a little bit of a shake. I can smell the barbecue sauce. She smells good. There you have it. There are those. Those look really good. Next we're gonna be mine. Hellfire and Brimstone Buffalo Wings. Looks good. I'm excited. Are you excited? I'm excited. So we have Lover Come Hack to me. Now this one, I enjoy good enough. I, between this one and the one we just watched, uh, Sin Deep or Beauty's Only Sin Deep or whatever it was, uh, they, they fight each other for being my least favorite. I don't know. This one's super predictable. But it's still, it's still fun. I don't hate it. I don't absolutely love it either, but... Um, I don't know if you remember it too well. Not yet. Okay. Well, just just from the title, what do you think is going to happen? Lover, come hack to me. 
I mean, it, it's in the name. Yeah, you think somebody's gonna die? <laughs> I mean, more than likely. <laughs> <laughs> so we've had a blast uh, watching this first season. We've only got one episode left, and I really, really love the the next episode. So I'm looking forward to talking about it and. Uh, like I said earlier on in the video, if you guys enjoy this and it gets good feedback, then season two is soon to follow. So I go back and forth um, with this one. Collection Completed is its pretty terrifying, honestly. It's got some humor to it, but it's its kind of fucking creepy. Um, you got Emmett Walsh in there, as it just showed on the screen. Audra Lindley. I mean, it, it's got a really good cast for a selective cast. This only features like three, I think it's only like three people in the entire episode. I could be wrong. There might be more, but three main people in the entire episode. It's very fun uh, and cheeky, but also creepy as fuck. Collection completed. Hope Lene. What you doing there, gorgeous? You hanging in there? We're a few drinks deep. <laughs> yeah. A few, few drinks deep. Just a couple. Just, Just a couple. couple. Uh, so this is the final episode of the first season. I've had a to cut like the uh, the promoter. That, to to be honest, I've had a blast watching it with you, and I love you. And, I love you. I've had fun too. Um, what do you think your like your favorite like horror TV show is? I really like Bates Motel or Dexter. Both. I like them both actually. Yeah. Probably it's like a toss up between the two. Which is uh, kind of ironic that Bates Motel is one of your favorite horror shows because we actually tried to do a movie madness it was way over a year ago closer yeah with it, the original with, with we, we were going to do all of the the psycho movies and yeah. it just kind of fell through this is the first time we've actually been able to get through the entire thing but it's just um, the first season but it's just the first season just there's gonna be there's more to come there's more to come <laughs> um but yeah so collection completed uh it's gonna be about animals we can tell from the start um a cat right at the beginning of the show. I don't show. want to cry. Don't cry. No, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. We'll get through but this you know together. What, what Norman does? Does she stealth him? No, you just have to watch. You just got to watch. I can't, I can't, you know, spoil it for you. But either way, collection completed. One of my favorites of the season. And when we move on to season two, you'll notice there's a lot of good episodes in that season as well. But, and they kind of... They amplify the the extremity. They amplify the, uh, the the extremes in the next season. This is more sort of basic, which I like. I'm a plain guy, so I like some of this stuff. But and I love these actors. So we're gonna get go, gonna go ahead and cut it here, and we'll uh, we'll do a clip in between, maybe one or two, considering this is the last one. Then we're gonna give our review and our ranking over the season overall toward the end. So. Oh, God. Stay tuned, kitties. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I would not. I would taxidermy him. How could you do this? I'm doing this for you. I'm making adjustments so we can share our common interest in our golden years. Could you Fucking love crazy. Now I can learn to love them too. But these animals are like my children. I would not be that calm. To be seen and not heard. There you go.
There you go. Okay, so we have just finished Tales from the Crypt Season 1. And it's time to give our review slash ranking. It's 2 a.m., a beer is cracked, the hair is down, it's time to just dive into it. So we're going to go episode by episode since there's only six episodes. First episode being The Man Who Was Death, which in my opinion is probably my personal favorite episode of the entire Tales from the Crypt series. Is it the best? That's subject to change. If, if you want it to be the best, if you don't, whatever you prefer, it's really a matter of preference. To me it is, and there's a, there's a lot of really good aspects in this episode. Uh, William Sadler really just, he owns the rope. Wondering if he's gonna crap all over himself when I juice him in a couple minutes. He will. He is this southern boy who has this dialogue with himself where he talks about the world, he talks about the scum, he talks about everything that he sees. He is the personal executioner. And it's 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 just really cool to see him breaking the fourth wall. 89, that really wasn't heard of. Nobody did that, that sort of thing. It had been done, of course, but to have it in a TV show was cool, and especially for, for a premiere episode. So I love that episode. It sticks with me to this day, and it has to be my favorite. So. My turn. <laughs> It's your turn, yeah. <laughs> um, it was definitely my number one. I really like the fact that he sat in the courtrooms and he made ju judgments for himself. Like, it reminded me a lot of like modern day Dexter. You killed my brother! Oh, you give a fuck, will you? Your brother, your brother was a fag! Hey, get out of here! I got nothing special against bikers. Hell, I used to own a hog myself once upon a time. Um, because Dexter, you know, obviously he, people that don't get convicted, he, and he knows they're guilty, he takes punishment into his own hands, sort of. Mm -hmm. And this guy did the same thing. Like, he took his job very seriously. Like, he took it outside the, you know. He did. And it, it was more than his job. It was... It was he, like he, he he well he he was a killer. He was, just, just, but honestly, he done it to the people he thought were guilty. He just he didn't just do it to be doing did. it. Yeah. He done it to the people he thought were guilty. And yeah, and I think the only way the episode could have ended any better is if he was in the chair, he got executed, and then the phone rang. That's that's what I think. So, the man who was dead. Episode one, great episode, best episode in my opinion. Number one for that's, me That's that's the number one. That's gotta be. That's why I did it, because it's my job. If a man ain't did his job, then what the hell is he good for? What's anything good for? So, second episode in the series is And All Through the House. And this one is maybe strictly nostalgia based because this one has pretty fucking bad acting something needs to be done about that fire have you got the poker yes well let me have it what did you say what are you deaf i said let me have it merry christmas you son of a bitch um, Larry Drake does a good job as the crazed Santa Claus killer from the mental institution. No! Portrays the uh, the in distress mom who just killed her husband. 
She is pretty fucking rough. It's 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 a little rough. That acting is really really cheesy. It's more comedic than it is horror, to be completely honest. Uh, but yeah, I, I put it on near Christmas every every year. I don't know why. Um, it just gives me that vibe. And I actually talked to her about this during the uh, during you know watching this and the horror madness. Um, I said it's it's kind of crazy that a horror series or horror movie, whatever you want to say. Um, gives you this homey feeling, and that that specifically does that for me. I, I watch that around Christmas, and I get this warm feeling in my heart. So, um, yeah, and all through the house, I love it. For me, it's my number two um, out of the season. But go ahead. Uh, honestly, the acting was terrible for me. The Santa did well. The child did well, but the woman, she just. She was my one bugaboo. <laughs> like, she did terrible for me. Like, it was the constant screaming. No! 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 The sitting down screaming, the not, like, taking charge or taking action. Like, I didn't like that because there were several instances that I would have been like, okay, why didn't she shoot him through the window? She was close to the gun. Or, you know, other answers. Why'd she just sit on the steps instead of, like, doing something to help her kid? I don't know. I just thought, just screaming, sitting down, like, her eyes, like, it just, it was all terrible for me. It was last for me. Last for you, second for me. The, the Honestly, the best part for me was, like, whenever she killed him, she murdered him, and she put the clear wrap over his head with the red bow, like, Christmassy. Like, that was, and, like, I drug him outside and I was like, oh, well, and if you watch it, you'll know what I'm talking about. Well, but other than that, like, it was last for me. I, I didn't like it. And I thought I would because okay. I love Christmas. Okay, so there you like. have it. Two, two completely, but, I, yeah, two completely different opinions. I grew up with it, so that, that's, I think that's why I lean toward it because it's not that great. But... So there you have it. There is, and uh, what was the name of it again? It is called An All Through the House. An All Through the House. So that's my second, that's her last, and there we go. We'll move on to the next episode. Thank goodness. See, Mommy? I told you Stan would come, and he didn't even have to come down the chimney. I let him in. <laughs> So, third on the list is Dig That Cat, He's Real Gone. And uh, this one is also nostalgic. I remember watching this one with my sister growing up, and I love this one. I think it's, this one touches on irony, it touches on greed, it touches on karma, it touches on a lot of different things. Um, it's got some really good actors in it as well. It's the type of fucking actors that you don't remember their names, but you know their fucking faces. Um, you've got the like the the Carney in it, who is fucking Knox from the '89 Batman. You know, give Knox a grant. Oh, I read your work. I like it. I like it a lot. Oh, thanks. Can I have a grant? I, I remember him, and I remember the lead dude too. And I just looked at his name, but I'm too drunk to remember it. Um, <laughs> but he's been in a lot of things. He was in the Bad Boys films, um, among other things. Um, but yeah, I, I love this one. I think it's interesting. It goes uh, sort of more on like the superstitious kind of way um, with the cat and the nine lives, and it, it kind of goes cuckoo. Wait, 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 wait. Into my brain? Oh, so I can die nine times. Now you're making sense, Doc. Precisely. Now, oh, and this is where you're going to do it, huh? I'm going to get your gland. And these are the tools of the profession. And it's the first episode of the entire series to do that. So for me, this is my third favorite um, out of the first season. Um, yeah, it just has to be my third. So It was number four for me. I, I mean, I liked it. And, you know, a lot of these episodes teach you that car about karma and about like how your actions have consequences consequences yeah. and repercussions and I like that about you know these shows or whatever um but I do want to go on record saying that I would spend nine lives with you oh <laughs> that's adorable yeah see that that's super fucking cute I was trying to look up the cast member for you that's why I was on my phone by the way 
um, to talk about. It was jo Joe Pan Pantaleno. I'm sorry if I'm butchering that. Like, I'm not sure. That's the one that you were talking about, right? Joe Pantaleno. I don't know. It's it's a hard name to. Well, because you said you can't remember it. I, so I, I can't remember, remember his name yet. It's a hard name to pronounce, but yeah, that's that's him. He's been in a lot of great stuff, and he he was really charismatic in that. And I I, I remember watching that episode when I was a kid and counting the lives. Wait a minute. That cat, it died. I already died once. I don't have any lives left. Oh my god. I don't have bad lives. Hey! And then when he gets down, he's counting, he's like, oh. He forgot I, I the cat. Know. Yeah, he forgets. The cat died. And I was like, oh shit, dude. Yeah, I mean, I was counting. I knew. Like, you're fucked, bro. But I knew like, the whole thing. The part I didn't understand was, like, why she killed him. Like, why she, like, let him come back to life. All of them. Yeah. That sounds wonderful. But I had an even better idea. I'll go on vacation. And you... Instead of just letting him, let the cop take him, whatever, and then taking the money, she paid the cop off and then, like, stabbed him. Like, that didn't make sense to me at all. Like, that part did not make sense to me. Like, why don't I just take the money then? Because it was right after that, like. That's very true. Like, it didn't yep. make any sense to me. Just let him, okay, just take the money and go. Let him do whatever yeah. happens, happens. She, like, well, she should have. She wanted to. It's like, she wanted that. So, yeah, I mean, I, I agree that. with you. And. So for me, that's my three. For you, that's that's your fourth. It right? was my fourth one. For your me. fourth favorite, my yes. third favorite, and that is the third episode. Get the fuck up, you folks! Fuck this. Okay, so the fourth episode is Only Sin Deep, starring Leah Thompson, and uh, this one, it's, when you watch the prior episodes and you watch this, it seems kind of different. It seems a little bit off the wall, and in turn, it, it, it seems more like a Lifetime episode in a lot of ways. $10,000. Let me get this straight. For 10 grand, you make a mold of my face? Not, not your face, your beauty. And not to dig on it, because I enjoy it, honestly, and I'll tell my ranking here in a second, but it just seems so slow and melodic, and it's like a lifetime-y kind of bullshit, and like her her facial features are, are this treasure, and she, she kills a pimp, and. I don't know, you kind of get lost and you kind of want to go, I can compare it to this, if I'm watching this episode I want to play Scrabble or I want to play like Rummy or something because I just, I lose myself in it that to where I don't really give a shit and that makes it sound like it's really bad, um, but if you enjoy those types of things, you'll enjoy this episode, it's not my least favorite, I'll say that, um, it is my... It, I would say it's it's my fifth favorite. It's my fifth favorite episode. It's also my fifth, but this episode really um, highlights the fact that people honestly will trade anything for temporary release. temporary happiness. Temporary happiness, but like, temporary like, um, like beauty, fame or f fortune right, is right. a better word. And yeah. beauty is only skin deep, but it's people always... will pay big prices. That girl of my dreams stuff? Mm-hmm. Well, 
let me tell you a little secret. You weren't lying. Even a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Like, just to have what they think is... Cosmetic or, or what, yeah, like, what... Well, because she she pays, she get, she gets her beauty for for money. And it turns out like it's temporary. Like all that is temporary. But what people don't understand is that's temporary. But like you could have made a lasting impression in other ways. Exactly. Like so that was definitely number five for me as well. Yeah. It's not my last favorite, but it's my it's my fifth favorite. Yeah, it, it's it's my uh, fifth favorite as well. I just I'll watch it and, and I enjoy it, but I don't I don't love it. So I think we need to move on to the next one. Oh, that's worth more than a hundred thousand dollars. Now I want it back. Give it back to me. I want my beauty back. Sure, sure. I could do that. I could give you your beauty back. That's what you really want. I'm going to take a, uh, well, I already took a big drink before this one. Uh, Lover, come hack me. Number five. It's, uh, Every time I watch this one, I find myself liking it less and less. It's, there's no substance, and it literally, it, it doesn't really serve a purpose. It's about a woman and a man who get married. I'll go load the car, hon. Peggy, you'll live to regret this day. Please. Don't spoil my happiness, Auntie. Lee. Peggy, I'm only thinking of your happiness. And you'll live to regret this day, too. Why would I ever regret marrying the woman that I love? You don't love her. You love the fortune that her mother left her. And you love her stocks and bonds and, and her real estate and, and that big house. Then you don't love any of that? What you saw through the clips, the man doesn't want the woman. He wants to use her for her money. He wants to kill her uh, during the honeymoon. And then there's ghosts involved with the dream and go back to sleep no! No! it's not Peggy they're both ghosts then there's this familial like execution that they do to these people it's just, it starts down a train in Tales from the Crypt where it, it, focuses on, it focuses on marital problems and it focuses on relationship shit. And that happens so much in later seasons and I feel like that might be a reason why. I just don't care for it. It's my last, it, it's, it's number six for me. I, I just don't, I don't care for the episode. I'll watch it, but if it, does, if it didn't exist, I, I could give two shits less. Well, it's number three for me. I feel like it's very, um, in some sort of way, it's very relatable. Um, because people can relate to not the, not so much the ghost part, but for marrying people for the wrong reasons or being with people for the wrong reasons. We don't have a perfect love. Peggy, I married you for your money. I've never loved you. That's not true. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. See? Now I brought this to kill you on our wedding night. I was gonna blame it on a burglar, and then I was gonna inherit all your money. But you didn't shoot me, because after we made love, you realized that our honeymoon was perfect, and that you loved me. No. No, I'll shoot you now. I swear to God, I'll shoot you right now. You love me too much to kill me. You wanna bet? But it's lifetime, babe. But... I don't know the other seasons after this. So right now, it's number three for me. 
And I really like that um, it's like she's following in her family's footsteps, you know, and he kind of perceives that and like talks to her about it, even though like he's using her for her money or whatever. And um, she does exactly what her mom does. And he had, and he's like, I'm using, this isn't love, this isn't love. I'm using you for your money. And she's like, no. I'm he, preserving our love. He could have got know, to I'm those. I'm doing this, like. Yeah, he he could have got to those bullets quicker. He, he definitely could have. Like, I would have rolled my ass off the bed. Like, I would have just laid there and tried to reach for him. I would have rolled my ass off the bed trying to get them. Like, I would have not just like laid yeah. there and took it. Like, exactly. I mean, I completely agree with that. Yeah. But um, I it was number three for me. I liked it though. What's well, last place for me? I think that's we have like conflicting rankings here they're pretty different but, but it started that, out the thing. same which i like yeah, I too like so, it's kind of yeah so that, that's a good thing so last for me third for her um love her come hack me or hack to me whatever the fuck it's called uh i didn't care for it much but she did so if she did she has a pretty good taste and i love her to death so give it a watch it's only because but, i love you that's why my taste is good don't hack me with an shit. With a, with, with a hatchet. No, no, it's Jeremy. That's the next video, baby. With a hatchet. Text Jeremy next video. That's you. That's what I'm okay. <laughs> I'm gonna have a baby girl. Really? And she's only this big. That's lovely, dear. <laughs> you love her, won't you? Well, of course I will. Just as I loved your mother, as I love you. <laughs> Only no more men. Understand? I promise. All right, so we have made it to the conclusion of this horror madness, and we are at the final episode of Tales from the Crypt Season 1 collection completed. And to me, this may be the creepiest one of the entire season. Um, I love this one. I always have. I find taxidermy really creepy in itself, and uh, they, they take it to a bizarre level in this one. Uh, I love the fact that the older couple have issues, and you can really see, especially if you're in a relationship, you can see both sides of the playing field. So you can see the guy who has worked 47 years, and you can see the woman who stayed home, and she's lonely, and she's trying to take care of these animals. And it, when he's retired, they both kind of collide, and it's not pretty. They're not used to being around each other. They don't know each other at this point, in fact. And it just fucking blows up. Here's your breakfast, honey. What the goddamn hell is going on? Are you running some kind of luxury resort for every flea-bitten parasite that trips across my doorstep? What's that dog eating? A steak? And it, it, it's got a really terrifying ending. So, a terrifying ending in my eyes because um, I can see that happening to me. Um, so, what do you think about this episode? I think you said it perfectly. Um, it is number two for me, by the way. I really enjoyed this episode. I love it too. I wanted um, to get higher, but I couldn't. I had to because, you know, Bates Motel for me. Like, I really, I, know. I really liked it. Um, and even though it was predictable, and it's exactly what I would have done, obviously. How could you do this? I'm doing this for you. I'm making adjustments so we can share our common interest in our golden years. When you love animals, now I can learn to love them too. But these animals are like my children. Good children ought to be seen and not heard. What have you done to my babies? Um. I, I agree with you completely, like, the worlds collide, um, mm -hmm. you know, like, he's used to working all the time, she's lonely, she made friends and babies with these animals, like, they're her babies, she treats them better, and even at one point, like, when she feeds him cat food, cat food and stuff, tuna, and she gives his medicine, like, she would an animal.
What was in there? Your aspirin. I put it in the brownie for you. God damn it, Anita. I'm not like your dogs or your cats. You don't have to put my medicine in food. I am not an animal. I am a human being. In a brownie. Like, but that's what she is accustomed, that's what she's used yeah. to doing. Like, she's not used to taking care of a husband. She's used yeah. to taking care of animals. animals. Yeah. And he's used to working all the time. That is beautiful. What is it? That's 47 goddamn years. That's what that is. 47 years, sun time hand tools. Six days a week, 52 weeks a year. Look at that thing. Some thanks. Can't even tell time with it. He's not used to working or being at home. So I really like this. I thought it was two for me. Two for I don't, me. I don't want to tell the ending. Me. I don't want to tell the main ending because in case people watch it, but like, yeah. I really enjoyed it. I really liked it. Um, and I thought it was really good. I agree. It's two for you. It's four for me. I still love it. I think out of all of them, it's the most horrifying one. So mm -hmm. if, if I had to base it off that, it'd be number one. And it could right. happen. Like, this is something that could, could happen. actually happen. Could happen. And happen. that's what and, makes it creepier. And that's honestly what, like, Tales from the Crypt did well, especially in the first season. I'll say the first three seasons, because the first three seasons are really solid. We're going to move on to the second season next. But you said only if we got good views. Well, we're going to get good views. Look. Because we're cute. We're very cute. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, it, it focuses on... Were you talking to the camera? Sorry. Okay, all right. Um, so, it, it focuses on realistic things, minus a few, like, voodoo episode type things happen here and there with the, uh, with the cats and with the beauties only sin deep and all that stuff. So... I like the first season a lot. I think they, they built a great, um, there was a great barrier built there. And they, they kind of, when you get, to, when we get to season seven, this, uh, <laughs> this horror madness will be a lot shorter, but. Do we get to wear we, the same shirts? Yeah, we'll wear the same Can shirts. Can we switch sometimes though? Sure. We're going to trade. Yeah, we'll trade yes. for sure. We'll trade for sure. But um, that is the uh, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. This is the J Sloan's YouTube channel. I'm talking in third person because I'm fucking drunk. But uh, yeah, it's my YouTube channel, and uh, this is my horror madness with my gorgeous girlfriend Hope. And we have watched the first season of Tales from the Crypt. If you like this, please like, comment, subscribe, all that bullshit that. People always say to get views. I don't give a shit if I get them or not. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. I'm doing this for fun. I'm doing it because I love her. So, but if you do like it, give some likes. Comment down below. And if you, if enough comments happen, we'll do a second season. He just I mean, said I he's going to do the second one anyway. So I'm not no. doing it if you don't fucking comment, okay? I'm not doing it. Dislike it. I'm not. I'm not going to call you dad. <laughs> Not even if there's a fire. <laughs> I was going to say the same thing. No, seriously, like, comment, and subscribe. Please. Uh, <laughs> like, are we begging now? Please. Begging. For change. <laughs> um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And, um, yeah, check this uh, this show out if you haven't. We grew up with it. We're, we're old, though, so... I mean, Listen, if let's if talk about old. If you're if you're if you're twelve and under and you've never seen this show, check it out. It's not that scary. You won't piss your pants. Um, it's just a classic. It's a classic show. It is. You're old, old baby. I'm not old. I'm very old. I'm not old. We're, you know, define old, but we're not going to do that in this video. We won't. We, <laughs> maybe we, we next video. Maybe next video. <laughs> Um, but thank you, thank you guys so much for watching. It's been a blast. We've had a good time. We've had an intoxicated time. And, uh, we're still able to articulate our thoughts, and that's a really good thing. Um, so yeah. It's been very deep, baby. It's, it's been very deep. deep. It's deep. <laughs> watch, uh, watch the first season of Tales from the Crypt if you haven't. If you want to see a part two, man, you know what to do. Alright, comment and subscribe, guys. And as always, keep it horror. Peace. Am I supposed to do peace?
Yeah, you have your piece too. <laughs> <laughs> so until next time, I want all of you to sit, stay, play dead. <laughs> Good boy.